money, you can't wake up in the morning, I'm talking right now. You're about to experience a morning show unlike any other. Shout out to the Breakfast Club. I hope to see y'all every morning. What you guys are doing right now is the hub culture. The Breakfast Club is my morning sit. I need it and I love it so much. I feel like you really not popping until you do the Breakfast Club. I've been waiting to come to y'all's show, man. I know you got to be a big time celebrity to be up in here. You got to be you gotta be big time. DJ Enzy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. The, the Breakfast Club, bitches. Break the phone off. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling call you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The <laughs> Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's going on? It's Cass. Cass, what up, man? Get it off your chest. Um, I just want to get off my chest. Man, it's hella hard to pan in the weather. It's, it's just stressful. And I thought it would be the message that we're making it more stressful than anything, but it's the family. It's just, yeah. I don't know. Why? Wow, what they doing? Everybody. Well, my mom is just intruding in everything. We asked her to just to make reservations for the restaurant, and she's adding like 15 other people on, wanting to throw different other things in there, and asking me to pay for it. I'm like, wait, you suggesting these things. Why don't you pay for it? Why do I pay for it? I pay for everything else. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's very <laughs> difficult. I, I would just let I would let your wife handle it, brother, and just just say yes and just take care of it. That's that's what I did for my wedding. I let my wife take care of everything, brother. What happened to the father's wife paying for everything? Remember that used to be a thing that they used to tell us growing up. I, that never happened. Oh, you should shut up. You got four daughters and I got four. We ain't doing that no more. My father-in-law did donate a significant amount to me and my wife's wedding, though. That is that that is a fact. Mm. The only person that's helped out is her grandmother and her godmother, and they helped her with her dress and as far as some of the planning and everything, but everything else has been on me, and nobody else has done nothing but me. So this is just crazy. Uh, you don't mind if I shout out my wife? Uh, you should, yes, sir. And, um, I just want to give a shout out to India Hawkins. This is uh, from your uh, future husband. Let you know I love you, baby. And uh, we're about to spend the rest of our lives together, fantastic lives together. We're going, we're going to elevate and get better through everything. I love there you, you go. Dope. Dope. All right, brother. Have a good one, man. And good luck with everything. Hello, who's this? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get it off your chest, mama. Okay. So we came in the car waiting for Charlemagne and yo 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 this morning, and he didn't act the day. And then just walking here like I just been here the whole time, huh? Exactly. <laughs> So you gonna give it to us and tell them, hey, this is E from the large on the second floor. You gave me my, my um, book bag that I can browse before. Oh, okay, Queen, how are you? I'm good, and I just want to say I miss you. And tell wife, I'm so excited. I'm gonna tell him right now. You know, well, he probably can hear you. You probably listening. He downstairs. Okay, K K. Yo 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 yo
not valued by black men anymore. I feel like mm. overlooked. Have you ever dated outside your race? I've tried it like once, but it just wasn't my thing. Look, I, I just mean, think you can't you can't blame a whole race of men for the ones that you've met. You know, so I wouldn't give up on that. But I think you'll end up at some point finding the right person. Just don't rush it and don't make decisions just because you feel like your biological clock is ticking. You got to be with somebody. Don't give in to that pressure. But just understand that things can change in an instant, you know. And I am still a fan of, while apps are good, going out and living my life and meeting people like that. Right, right. Thank you, Angela. I love you guys. All right, have a good one. Thank you. You too. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, yo, 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 yo. It's all about you, DJ Andy. And only you. Good morning. How may I help you this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it off my chest. I've been wanting to get this off my chest since I was at your car show. That, and Jersey, that's how long I've been wanting to get this off my chest. Uh-uh. I've been calling for this. I, this is my moment right here. That's uh-huh. all I have. I'm, I'm going to say, first of all. Hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, man. What is going on? All right, continue. All right, I'm going to say happy vibes out to the Buffett Club as a whole. But DJ, if y'all got to say. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on one second, man. Hold on, hold on. Okay, continue. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say, I'm going to send love vibes out to you for real. I watched you at your car show with Jersey. I was a vendor with my Real Life Faces vision, and I got to say, you was out there with us early in the morning. You took great care of people's property. I watched you just take and nurture them cars like they were your own. I got much respect for you, what you do for your car show. I watched you all day long. You was engaged with us. You didn't separate yourself. So I'm just sending you salute and happy vibes out to all your car shows. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming and visiting our booth and giving us love and taking pictures and everything. Salute to you, brother. If I had a a fancy car, I would definitely send it to you. I wouldn't even worry after watching you because I watch people, how they deal deal with stuff. And I got to say... Um, I got much respect for you and the love that you share for people properly when they send it to your car show. So peace out, and I hope all your car shows be full to capacity. Aww. Thank you so much, and thank you for coming, man. <laughs> we really, really appreciate it. Thank you for being a vendor. Hello, who's this? This is Gerv Pond from Seattle. Hey, Gerv, what's up? Get it off your chest. Hey, I just want to get off my chest, man. You know, like, you know, sometimes, you know, this is for, you know, for whoever needs to hear this, but, you know, sometimes life can get tough, you know. We've got to continue to keep getting up and keep pushing and all that stuff, you know. And honestly, you know, just be blessed that God blessed us today. That's you know, it. Live every day. That's it, brother. Yeah. Hello, who's this? This is D from the Chuck. D from the Chuck. What's hey, going on? What's going on? Get it off your chest, bro. Um, well, I just need some advice, fellas. Um, I'm a married man, um, newly married. I just wanted to know, um, what, what can I do to spice up, uh, my my relationship with my with my wife. Like you need some you mean spice my, up how? What, like in what in what um, department? You know, we, we've been married. We, we've been dating for a while. We've been dating for years, but we're newly married, and I feel like we're kind of getting into like into like the normal relationship group. We're just going to bed at night, and you know we used to go out and party and do all kind of stuff. Like how can we get back into it? Or what can I do? I mean, you never you you never should stop dating your wife. I think that's the biggest thing. You know what I mean? I think sometimes we as men get complacent, but you can never stop dating her. Right, Keep right, dating right. her. Keep courting her constantly. Right. And, constantly then, and then there's also, if you don't want to go out at night, because I know sometimes it's difficult to go out at night, there's always brunches and day parties. You can go to restaurants during the day that play music so you can get back home when you need to get back home. And you can do things like, what is she into? Is she into hair? Is it What, what TV shows? Yeah, she's into hair and like, uh, makeup and, um, you know, and our kids and stuff like that. Um, I just feel like we're just getting into like this 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 group where we're just like being normal people <laughs> and we wasn't like that before. So Yeah, I'm it's difficult. I mean life like happens that. but you gotta take this you gotta take the necessarily steps to, to make sure that like Charlemagne said that you always continue to date. That might mean, you know, go out Friday night. It doesn't have to be an expensive restaurant depending on how much you make or what you can afford. It could be just a, a, a date night at the movies. It could be take her to a play. It could be something as small if she like hair and makeup. Yeah, There's so many hair yeah, and makeup shows all over the country. You know what I mean? That's in the local area depending on where you at. Take her to a hair and makeup show. Just do things that just to show that you care. 
You know, the, fact, the, the fact. typical flowers, the typical, if she likes Caribbean yeah, yeah. food, bring a Caribbean food. If she likes cheesecake, bring a cheesecake from her favorite spot. You know, little things like that. It doesn't have to be her birthday or anniversary to do those type of things, but it just shows shows her you care. Okay, thank that you. Let me, shout big, right bro. Let me shout it out right quick. Go ahead, bro. I want to shout out my wife, Shaniqua. I love you very much, baby. I can't wait to see you, babe. There you go. Thanks, fellas. And, and, don't, and, and don't forget the edibles. Oh, edibles, edibles always work, yeah. too. Underwear? Yes. Underwear? He said underwear. Oh, oh man. <laughs> you know, he said underwear? Underwear? I like how you think so, <laughs> man. Ooh. You, you can start that, too. You can, do the, you can do that, too. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I like it. I like it. Thanks, fellas. All right, brother. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line right now. That's right. The legend, Jay Prince. Welcome, sir. Oh, yeah. How's it going? Well, we got to thank you first because we all got, uh, each individual one of us got a, a box from you. With some liquor in it. Beautiful. You know, at Beautiful. first at first when I seen the box, I thought maybe we did something wrong. I was gonna see a finger or a head in it, and I'm just joking. God dang, man. Don't do the OG like that, man. <laughs> and Jay Prince said, Eddie, why would you say that? I said, what did we do? I seen something from Jay Prince. I said, oh boy. But it was a it was a nice uh a, a, a box of, of some wine. So you got into the liquor business. So what what put you into the, the liquor industry? I heard this doctor by the name of Dr. Red Duke from Houston, Texas, years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh he was speaking on the benefits of uh a red wine, you know what I mean? The, uh, how it benefits you health-wise. Right. Health benefits. Uh, and uh, I was inspired, you know, I was inspired uh, from two perspectives, you know, from the health perspective, and then I had an opportunity to go to Napa Valley and peep it from a, a business perspective, all the vineyards and everything. And before I knew it, I started, you know, showing interest in that red wine business. Is that the secret? Do you look in 25, okay, my brother? And by the way. <laughs> you know, spray paint a little bit, Charlamagne. <laughs> <laughs> Envy do it, too. Envy got the, he got the little spray paint. He got it. <laughs> it's not spray paint, but go ahead. And, and it looks like you spared no expense, too, because the packaging is beautiful of the loyalty wine. You see that? Yeah, no, that was important to me to, uh, you know, for bottles to be quality and also the drink to be quality in the uh, the champagne as well, you know, the rosé, cabernet, and uh, merlot, you know. So, you know, it, it, it's a compliment of who I am, so I want it to be quality. You know, one thing people don't know about you, Jay, you really big in the agriculture. Like, you know, you, 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 got, you got a lot of farmland out there in Texas, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a thousand acre uh, ranch. Thousand plus acre ranch, a lot of black angus cattle, a lot of horses, wildlife. You know what I mean? I always uh, been that person that I'm in love with the things that the creator make more so than man made things. You know, you know, OG. In recent years, we've seen you more visible than probably we've ever seen you with the book and even the wine. You know, how, how important has it been for you to always make moves in, in silence? I definitely had trained myself to move that way prior to doing different things. But <clears throat> today, you know, it's a it's a different time. It's a different day. And uh, I, I believe it's a time and a place for everything. And uh, I think I made adjustments where they are needed. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? To be uh, inspiration to those that came after me. Is, is, that's why, is that why you decided to speak more now? Because, because you know oh, you inspire people? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. I, uh, I know. Uh, it's some things that I know, and I don't want to take them with me to the other side without sharing <clears throat> a lot of my wisdom. So, yeah, that's the heartbeat of uh, why I like to speak when I speak. Mm -hmm. Last time we spoke to you, I know you were uh, helping Carl Crawford out with uh, Megan Thee Stallion and Rock Nation and everything that was going on with that. How, how was that situation going? Has everything been worked out? Yeah, that one is actually me and the homie Jay-Z uh, spoke when was that last week on the last point of closing that deal? And he and I, you know, I think we was on the phone probably two minutes, but we was in agreement with uh, reaching the last deal point. So <clears throat> I'm looking for that to be wrapped up. And he got to be dry before the week is out next week. You know, I'll turn to She'll be officially on Rock Nation and Carl Crawford to just, you know, sign off. So that 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 there'll be departed, no more problems, no more situations, right? Uh, everything will, will be smooth, you know. She's still with 1501, you know. 
slash 300 and Rock Nation them is managing her. All right, and then you have Erica. So tell me, what's your relation to Erica Banks now? Because we see she just recently got her deal and I know you and Carl Crawford are tight. So how are you involved? Well, that was the deal that uh, <clears throat> we closed up uh, what a week or so ago. You know, myself and the homie G. Robeson was, was involved as well. And, uh, you know, she's special. You know, Erica is special. We're looking forward to big things where she's concerned. And, and, you know, 1501, the homie Paul Crawford, a lot of people can stop calling him, calling it luck now because this is second one and he, he, he on the grind for number three. When, when, and, you know, speaking of that, when did you, when did you know that rap a lot, rap a lot wasn't just, just, just a flash in the pan? You know, I, I believe that to be the case from day one. You know what I mean? My faith and my belief brought me to where I'm at right now. So I always believe that, you know, I could, uh, you know, take rap a lot and take, uh, you know, my goals and visions where I wanted to take them. You know, I just was one of them dudes that thought that way. Matter of fact, if you don't think that way, don't nothing ever come to fruition. So you know, I felt that way from day one. And that's the only way I was able to, uh, withstand the uh, the struggles and, and, and obstacles, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. as I told everybody, it was seven years later before I had any success in the music industry. So that's a test of time, you know? Hey, co correct me if I'm wrong too, OG. Uh, Harry O, he was one of the original founders of rap -A -Lot, right? Never. Never? Never. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that, that lot need to be uh, cleaned up. Harry O never had no business whatsoever where rap a lot was concerned, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The only thing uh, we ever done in the music industry together was he took the Ghetto Boys on tour with a couple of dates in LA and Oakland with the Fat Boys and with Salt and Pepper, you know, things like that back in the day. And then, and, and that was in 1989 or 90 or whatever that was in. And then in 94, you know, I'd done a deal with Dana Dane. Mm -hmm. You know, he and I done that deal, and you know that didn't go too well. That was a y'all signed Dana Dane, the rapper. Yeah, yeah, I, I never knew that. Dane, but I, you know, done that deal with him, and I think he was with Maverick at the time, and that was the end of that situation. How did y'all do a deal with Dana Dane? Dana Dane, of course, is from New York. So how, how did y'all hook up with Dana Dane back then? Well, I knew Dana. You know, I know Dana from uh, back in the day. He was was with Salt and Pepper, Herbie. Herbie Lovebug and all of them, he and I just used to party and have a bunch of fun. And, you know, I eventually done a deal with him and then I let them do their thing together when I got out of the way. All right, we got more with Jay Prince when we come back. Breakfast Club, good morning. The Breakfast Club. Now, for I mean, people that don't know Charlamagne, like, explain who Harry O is, because somebody who's listening have no idea what you're talking about. Well, Harry O just got pardoned by Donald Trump, and, you know, they were saying that he was a founder of uh, Death Row Records, and yeah, I guess rap a lot, you know, but clearly that's not true. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just something the, the DEA was trying to do to, to, to build a case against the brother we talking to right now, Jay Prince, back right. in the day. That's what it seemed like to me. I'm the type of dude, man, I don't, you know, I've been out here in these... Uh, streets a long time. A lot of people from the streets, but a lot of them had to go do time. They ain't been in the streets. And one thing <clears throat> about these streets, you can't be that kind of individual where you play games with nobody money or play games, you know what I mean, with situations like that. I ain't never been that person. Mm -hmm. And so for one, to try to shit on, you know, the rap a lot name, I try to take credit, you know, from Southern brothers, you know, because it ain't no I and we. I didn't even do it myself, but I got a I got a team mm -hmm. that worked with me that built, you know, rap a lot way before I knew him. You know what I mean? We this movement started before I even met the brother. Right. You know, uh, I definitely learned some game from him. You know what I mean? Where streets are concerned, but uh, <laughs> you know, he have to uh, at his own lips be real about never. You know what I mean? And uh, having no ownership where rap a lot is concerned. Have you ever asked him to, to clear that up? I never, you know, it was an interesting thing. You know, I hadn't talked to this brother, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because of these words and different things that have been said, you know, and uh, I'm the type of dude when one get to saying things that, you know, is not so, and then 
from the result of things being said that way, I get investigated and get attacked by all these three letter work. I don't have much to say to them kind of people. Have you, have you, have you spoken to Shook? You keep in touch with Shook? No, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, we don't have nothing to talk about either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know, I wish him the best. And, uh, you know, he in that pig pen right now. You know, I, I hope someday he's able to spend his last day with his family. Watching all these biopics recently, does that make you feel like maybe making your book into a movie? Yes, I'm out of time, Angelie. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm having a conversation with a few individuals, and uh, I look forward to that. I, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, Little Duval has been actively um, campaigning to play you in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a biopic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me that. I, I, I met the little homie. He, he told me definitely to put him on that list. Uh, recently, I heard that uh, uh, what's the homie's son name? Uh, man, I can't even think of the homie name. Who? Oh, who's his daddy? Son. Okay. Yeah, I heard he was. Uh, in oh, John David, why wow, he's great. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely considering that. Oh, he he said he wanted to play you. Yeah. Oh wow. That'd wow, be wow. dope. Yeah. Hey, you know what one of your biggest strengths is, OG? For some reason, you know when it's time to cut ties with something or somebody. Where, where, does, where does one acquire that skill? That's connected to the intuition and the discernment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Being plugged into the uh, creator. And we all have that connection. It's just about whether we connected to that connection or not. Mm -hmm. So I, I give a lot of, uh, I give a lot of that credit to the creator because if I don't have that ability, then I won't be a free man to have these conversations. Mm. Gotcha. How many how many artists have come to you during the pandemic and just ask you how to stay afloat, man? Because you know money getting low for a lot of these artists, OG. <laughs> I can't say many. You know, I can't say many. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not in that stay afloat business. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one gonna be practicing. You know, come to me by my paper. But uh. Yeah, I hadn't experienced that much, Charlamagne. Have, have you so taken that gold AK-47 to the gun range yet? Yeah, right in my backyard. Right in the backyard? <laughs> <laughs> right in the backyard, man. I, you know, I cut it loose right there. You know, when you got that kind of land, you can just put targets on a whole lot of things and do all the shooting you want to do, man. Absolutely. Well, Jay Prince, does this mean next time we see you in person, we get to have a drink? Hey, we got to do that. No you know, orange it, juice this time? No, I'm going straight from the bottle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I finished the whole bottle on the, uh, what's the homie that, uh, show that I was on? The, uh, drink, drink, drink Chance. Chance. Drink Chance. Yeah. Nori. Uh, Nori and DJ Effin. Oh, uh, they got I you. Saw, I had never witnessed myself uh, after a bottle. You know, I, was, I think I was lit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They'll did you, do it to you. Did you go back to the room and go to sleep? Man, it felt like with everything on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about everything on, Shelly. <laughs> hey, always a pleasure to talk to Absolutely, you, OG. man. Thank you, OG. Likewise, man. And thank you for the wine. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, make sure y'all go grab some of that loyalty collection. You see he got it on the table back there. That's right. I got mine. Oh, sure. All right, it's James oh, Prince. Bro. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's topic time. Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, I had another question, but Charlemagne uh, wanted to do this. What was your question? What makes you horny? Mine, no. I don't want to Shut up. That came out Kim Kardashian and Pete Davis. What is, by the way, this could all fall under the same umbrella of what makes you horny. What? No, seriously, because it seems like older guys is making these young girls horny nowadays. And I mean, I would say vice versa, but we know that's always been the case. Okay, because we saw, I saw my cousin Chloe yesterday say she need an older man. Say she need an older man to... Oh, he said my cousin Chloe. I'm like, who's your cousin Chloe? But all right, Chloe, Chloe Bailey. She said she need an older man, you know, that can teach her something. And we saw the interview... But I don't think she meant 20 years older. I don't know what she meant. I just know that we have another example, which is Carisha. Carisha, Young Diddy. Miami from the City Girls. You know, I love the City Girls. And Diddy. Mm -hmm. They had a conversation yesterday. And now she's 28 and Diddy is? 52. Okay. 24 years her senior. Weeks. Two. Okay. Yeah, that means you completed kindergarten through 12th grade twice. Twice. Wow. Twice. But they like it. 
Clearly, Clearly they like it. Clearly they like it. I mean, I mean, and you know, it's I'm not. It's cute to watch. You know, what I'm saying it's cute to watch only because you could tell she's making him feel young again. It looks tiresome. It does look tiresome. You know, and and the question I wanted to uh, to ask this morning is like, I want to know what the dynamics are between an older man like that and a young girl. I just want to know what the dynamics are. Like, we our camera guy Nick. Nick does all our uh, digital stuff. Mm -hmm. He said he's dating a girl that's seven years younger than him. Right. And he goes, oh, she has a lot of energy. <laughs> and he said he's in bed every night at 930 now because of it. He said ever since he's been dating her, he's been going to bed at 930 because he just can't keep up. I will say this, right? Mm -hmm. I was on vacation with the wife this weekend, mm -hmm. this week. And, um, you know, it was good. We relaxed. We chilled. But when it, when I when it was twenty years ago when I went on vacation, I wanted to be on excursions, activities. I wanted to parasail, but now I just want to chill. And that's why I say it's so interesting. I and relax. I, that's why I say it's so interesting. And I want to know the dynamic because we're at the age. I'm forty three. I'll be forty four in a few weeks. I'm at the age where I don't want to do nothing. So when you're fifty two years old and you got to keep up with this young girl, and she twenty eight, and she using slang like, oh, so you acting bad, and you replying, I'm acting bad, bad. You might be doing a little too much, but I just want to know. Hello, who's this? Yo, it's Tim. Hey, what's up, bro? You, you, how old are you, man? I'm 31, and the chick that I'm talking to is 21. Oh, 10 years. And Boy, I was about to say. Years. Yeah, I was about to say, too. I was about to say. I, <laughs> what? Was said, what? Okay, how, so tell me, tell me about that <laughs> dynamic. What's the <laughs> dynamic like? The dynamic is great when it's just me and her, but when we out in public, I feel like people's just staring at me, clowning me. I'm really at a crossroads right now. I don't know what to do. Why? She looked that young? 31 and 21 ain't that much of a difference, and y'all kind of grew up in the same, same like, demographic. It's not like you got to explain things to her. Like, I know some old dudes. I know some old dudes that'll be talking to a young girl and be like, oh, you a regular Doogie Hauser. And she like, who the hell is Doogie Hauser? <laughs> Well, do you even know who Doogie Howser is? He doesn't know who Doogie Howser is. I do know who Doogie Howser is. Who's Doogie Howser? Yeah. He's the, uh, the boy genius or whatever. There no, you okay. go, there you, you go, go, there you go. go. Okay, okay. Yeah. But check this out, check this out real quick. So we go to the gas station, I, I buy a drink, you know, a, an adult beverage. And I'm with her at the cash register, and I never get carded, but they would not sell it to me unless... She showed, she showed the card. Oh, so she look, uh, she look young, young. Right, she look young, young. She look young, young. But what, can I, can I? I, I can, what, what adult beverage did you buy from the gas station? Probably a beer. I was, ah, uh, I'm a spritzer man. You know, one of them truly joints. A Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, cause you know it's like a nice date. You know, I want to keep the nice and light. You know. I want better for her, yeah, so she need a too, she man. need an old she need an older man that know how to uh, drink some cognac or some fine tequila <laughs> or something, sir. Some spritzer. Hello, who's this? I want better for her. Yeah, yeah, this fresh. Fresh, what up? How man? old are you, fresh? Now I'm 47. I can tell with the name how, Fresh. How old are you exactly? <laughs> exactly. I'm 47. I'm 47. The girl I'm dating, 24. Okay, see now this is a good one. Tell now, me the dynamics of the relationship. Yeah, how's this sir? going? I mean, I mean everything, er, everything good, bro. I mean, she, you know, the, the only thing is, I said, difference is like the age group. He, the guys have like your conversation a little bit different, you know, your topics and what you do. But like the sex, sex is all, is, is all good, bro. Not because I'm older, I, I can't handle her more. Like she can't handle me. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I be, we, we, not because it, I said if you over like seventy, it's a problem. But yeah, man, man's a man, man. He he gonna do his thing. Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. Does she get your references? Like if you be like, you know, you throw on certain songs or reference certain TV shows, does she get it? Oh, if you like that's fresh, does she know what that means? <laughs> she get it, but like I said, you know, like certain them young, young girls, like the conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm an older cat, so I don't be with too much of the BS. You know what I'm saying? You know they got all that little BS type of Ray Ray with them. Now listen, you know, now listen here, old man. She already got a daddy. Okay, you ain't here to be her daddy now. You know what? I, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm older than her daddy too, son. Wow. wow. You proud of that? Yeah. You proud of that? Have yeah, you I'm met you met her daddy? Nah, I ain't met her dad, but you know what I'm saying? I don't need to. Damn. Is, is her dad I know life? that God. <laughs> My God. Like said, God is good. Party, she, saw, she saw me. I got, I, got, I, got, I got some grades in, in the chitty chin chin, too. 
And she pushed up. Time I, time I hollered, it was, it was a done deal, bro. Sealed. Okay. Uh, let me ask, is her dad in her life? No. Yeah, somewhat, somewhat. He, you know, one of them deadbeat dads. He's yeah, around, that, but I get he, it. He, he never did nothing. All right. I mean, the moral of the story is, man, everybody do what, you know, makes them act bad. <laughs> Okay. If you want to act bad with your young girl this weekend or your, your old dude this weekend, do your thing. I'm not judging. I'm just interested in the dynamic. That's all. Me, I'm because I'm the exact opposite. I like old doing that. And it could be the fact that where your older man going to go? What do you mean? This weekend, he going to watch the game and then he going to go to sleep. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Not if you one of these young, older dudes that still like to act bad and die in their bed. You know what I'm saying? The only reason you ain't out here in these streets is because you happily married. Look at you. What's the point of wearing all that Beijing at your age? Uh, what are you you married. About? You got five kids. Yeah. Boy, I have six kids, sir. You what? Six kids. Six kids. Okay. Yes. There's no reason for you to be wearing all that dye. Uh, what are you, you even got your about? eyebrows dyed. I don't have my eyebrows. Yes, you do, do man. Not. Look at you, King. Well, look at, you. Look at yourself. You? you got on a pink hoodie, rhinestone. What is wrong with pink hoodie? A rhinestone it belt. Pride month. <laughs> what is wrong and with you? And a pink truck of snapback. If you ain't Dominican, I don't know what is. <laughs> And I don't have a rhinestone belt on. There's no rhinestone in my belt. Well, you ain't denying nothing else. I said, <laughs> show him the truck I had. What did that, that truck I had? A super Dominican. What I had? Yeah, it? I ain't messing with you, man. <laughs> Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We got Diddy or Love. 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 We got Love. You look building. very New Yorkish today. Oh, man. You got the Tim's on with the puppy. Love oh, yeah. Love, I feel like you just bought that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely, definitely didn't have that in Cali. Yeah, I didn't have this in LA. So. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It, it definitely, um, I, I feel good. I was saying. I was saying thank y'all for the balloons and everything. Just thank you know everybody for the love, cause I was just in a um in the spirit of gratitude of just like how like like how important it is as an artist to get an opportunity to come on the Breakfast Club. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm puff or just like you know just the things that I have on the schedule, it really it really really is a blessing. So yeah, I'm just here blessed. Excited and um, <laughs> always a pleasure to see you. I used you. to be scared to do the morning, the no. Breakfast Club. I ain't scared no more. You should never be scared. We want to appreciate you because you were one of the, the first people that believed and put us on your platform. That is very true. Yeah, with you thank guys. you. And when a lot of people were scared, you know, we came on early on. You know what I mean? When you were building Revolt, and we just always want to say thank you for that. Oh we man, thank you, y'all. thank you. Honey. And you know, we do this because you are a living legend. I know Absolutely. people like to throw that term around now, mm. but you really are an icon, living. Mm, I appreciate that. And, Feels good. And I had a chance to see you at the iHeart Festival. I went to Vegas, so you tore it down, and you had yeah. your son on stage. I saw the live that you did beforehand. Yes. Saying how he has a hit record right now. Yes. Yes. Christian, which is, you know, my youngest son. and Your he, clone. Yeah, my clone. He's like my twin. But he always wanted to be on stage since he was three years old. Mm -hmm. Every time he would be at, you know, on tour, he would just, like, be mesmerized by the stage and, and want to get on and talk on the mic to the people. And um, so he came out, and when he, st he said he wanted to be a rapper, I said, well, you, you got to do it on your own. So he found his own distribution. Mm -hmm started grinding but everybody thought that I was helping him you know what I'm saying and so um you know they was definitely giving him like you know making him work for what he just accomplished you know what I'm saying which was what he had to do he had to give him you know an undeniable hater proof record he got one and he got one with Kodak Black mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying can't stop won't stop bad boy he's on the BET Awards tonight performing it that's right and I'm I'm so proud of him because I had nothing to do it I had I didn't call BT. I didn't call nobody mm -hmm. and ask him. You know, I I did ask a couple of DJs since me and him are both on the charts. If he if they could, you know, saying support the records as family. But that's after he had the hit. You know what I'm saying? Besides that, he got it on his own. And I want to make that clear to people because they definitely made him work for it. And he did the work. And congratulations, we the first father and son duo to be on the top ten. Wow. Okay. Competition that's in the house though. Is there competition in the house now though? Like Wait, let's give it a, 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 a round of applause for that. That's legendary. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's I mean, legendary. And, and that's first father and son. And that's dangerous territory for him because it's like you sample mm -hmm. crush on you mm -hmm. and you're saying the can't stop, won't stop, which is a legendary phrase. Yeah. That could be very big shoes to fill, but yeah. he, he seems to have uh, done his job. Yeah, and definitely. I, I, you know, I told him, you know, Bad Boy was on pause and he was like, nah, there's no way I'm letting that. He's, he's so Bad Boy, so... He's just taking the flag up himself, and it's really, really proud to see, you know, him to go through, you know, that that adversity. I was asking, is there any friendly competition in the crib at all? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other day, he was charting higher than me. <laughs> out of nowhere, and they just, like, delivered me the message. And I was just like, I know that's my son, but he's not getting to number one before me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, that is not the way we come back in together. Blackball. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I didn't blackball. I just told my team to turn up. Mm -hmm. And I felt so proud. Like, I felt, like, just so proud. That's that, kind of that, up, that, 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 that he was higher on the chart than yeah. me. Who's you know higher what I'm saying? He is. Um, I don't think as of today. But, <laughs> but you got more resources. That's not fair. Yeah. You guys go straight. Hey, yo, hey, yo it's, it's just like running a race with your pops. <laughs> <laughs> you know now, how did you get Young what? Miami on the remix? Um, <laughs> yeah. She, how'd, you, how'd you get it? Did she charge you? Did she charge you? How'd you get it? Nah, charge? nah, nah. She was at the studio. I said, get on the mic. Let's do this. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, she was in the studio. And she cleared it right away, no problems? Cleared it right away, yeah. <laughs> Everything's clear. Everything's clear. You know what I'm saying? So you knew you wanted Young Miami and Ashanti. Yes. Young Miami was really supposed to just do it for a challenge. You know what I'm saying? She wanted to do the open mic challenge. She really loved the record. And, um, but Ashanti, you know, um, I just felt Ashanti just, just because I think that, that music and art could... You know what I'm saying? It gives you a chance to speak your mind when it comes to the love territory. And, you know, after I seen Irv do his thing, and I was just thinking, I was like, sis may want to, you know, you know, express herself on this song, you know? Oh, so she's it's kind of like a rebuttal to the stuff Irv was saying? Yeah, like, we talk about whatever's going through our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Irv is my man, and that's I, I know Ashanti before. Ashanti was, like, you know, 14 and I just felt like with the, with the music, I'm trying to get real truth out the music. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was actually, I was calling different people that, you know, maybe had public relationships because that's what, you know, you know, when I made the record, it was from my public relationship and me having to move on. And so that's how it kind of came together. Mm -hmm. And I feel when you make records in, the tr on, in that truth, it really jumps out. So, um, yeah, nah, the remix is, is really crazy. It's like the rest of my remixes, it's, 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 it's going to take the record to the next level. And, um, yeah, they, they really, really, really did their thing. You know? That's interesting to see you that vulnerable and even to admit that that record is about an ex-relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a, you know, when you in this game and you could definitely get an ego, you know what I'm saying, and definitely experience an ego death when it's somebody that you like, nah, we we, we going to make it through anything, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But then when it's over, and then it's, it's um, yeah, it's over. Like when when something's really really over with a woman, it's over, and 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 you gotta move on. And so I really had to learn that in my life. I didn't want to move on. I was. But that's I don't go out without a fight. I'm like crazy boyfriend. But even after they married and <laughs> got kids and everything else, you stir up a lot of shit like that. Did he? If they married and got kids, um. No, I mean, that's when you got to move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the only reason why I moved on. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's, I'm, it's, it's always going to be, you know, that's the thing I have as an artist is my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I may not, I maybe cannot write the best rhymes as Kendrick or Nas, but as an artist artistically telling my truth, you know what I'm saying, whether it's, it's through love or getting money or whatever it is, it's, it's, it's going to like ring true, you what, know? What accountability do you take in that coming to an end? Me? I mean, everything. I was just like, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I, was, I just was, wasn't, um, I've never been a good boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? Are you a whore? And that's why, no, no, we're, I'm single, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I'm honest. Now, but I was like, I would always be, you know, lying or seeing it. But then it, the internet just went so crazy, you know, and and I, I definitely was like a, you know, a cheater. 
Were you an insecure boyfriend? Okay. Huh? Were you an insecure? No, boyfriend? I wasn't an insecure. I just, I was just wanting my cake and eat, eat it actions. too. I just, I just wanted it all. I'm, a, I'm just a Scorpio. And you don't want those with, women to with do a lot other of money, things. huh? And you don't want those women to do other things. I think a lot of guys have that where they're like, I want to, you know, be together, be with you, treat you like my woman. Have you not do other things? But I'm gonna do other things. Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, before I, I just wanted to have a girlfriend and just have maybe some girls on the side. You know what I'm saying? Just to have, you know what I'm saying? But I had one in my previous relationship. I wanted to it to just be like that, you know. And um, you know, I had a lot of growing up to do. You know what I'm saying? I grow, you know, even if I was older, I had a, you know, the, the way I was seeing it, I wasn't seeing it right. You know, you can't play with somebody's live, live life. You can't play with somebody's heart. All right, we got more with Diddy when we come back, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Diddy. Carisha said y'all go together real bad. <laughs> uh -huh. Bad, bad. But she also bad. says she's single, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Carisha's single. I'm single. And, um... It's working but she, for you. She, no, 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 I'm saying she's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. This girl is one of the... I'm so blessed to have met this human being. You know what I'm saying? Just the uh, the way she makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. The way she, you know, just, you know, rides with me. And, you know what I'm saying? The support without it having to be, oh, this is my girl or this is this situation. You know what I'm saying? She's like, uh, has been a real friend. And, and you don't get like you don't find best friends later on in life mm -hmm. that's you right. know what i'm saying and so she's she's one of my best friends and that's really the definition for it that's it's my shorty wop she always gonna be laced always gonna be hot smiling i you love seeing saying? your dynamics on carisha please i was like look at diddy acting like a little shy he blushing yeah. now <laughs> you know kind of yeah. behind the shades right now yeah. not knowing what to say i think that's a good thing though yeah yeah it's it's like i'm I'm saying I'm not monogamous, but I'm not not ready for, you know what I'm saying, for my snow soul to be snatched. I'm not trying to be a player. I think dating is important when you've gone through something and you know you're not really ready to be in a relationship and, 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 and it's getting to an important time, mm -hmm. you, know, it, you know, just taking the time to get to know people. You know, I could have had people that I took the time with to date that I could have been in a relationship with then been broke over somebody else. But now nah, we dated, we had fun, we saw it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It didn't last the test of time. So, I mean, that's that's that, that's my world, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not taking away from any man that's in love or any people that want to be married or want to, you know, say they monogamous, but they not. I'm just telling the truth. Wait, wait, wait listen, real quick, real quick. Do you want to get married? Because I heard you say No, that. I don't want to get married. You don't want to get married? No, I, I don't want to get married, but I would have a ceremony, a ceremony that would be better for a wedding for for my wife. You just want to have a party? Yeah, you want to have a party. Is this a party? Is this a party? Is this a Diddy party? Nah, because, <laughs> be, because it would be like a, a celebration and a ceremony. Mm -hmm. It would be a, a celebration ceremony. of what, though? A, a celebration of our love. Oh, okay. I mean, we just do it different, King. It's all I, good. I, I was going to say It'd that. It'd be a celebration of my love, and she would probably get, you know, um, a half a billion dollars. And see, that's what I was going to say, right? Yeah, a yeah woman, she ain't got to get it when she leaves, baby. I want you to get it when you're here. But see, that's what I mean, right? It, it, it'd be you kind of, me? if a woman's dating you, you're doing things for her that she's never had done before. You're taking them to Italy, you're buying them crazy cars. You can imagine how she might think, he really likes me. But that's just your lifestyle. That's easy for you. Nah, I really like him from taking to Italy and buying right. him a car. Mm -hmm. Nah, I didn't say oh, okay. I, I don't say I ain't really like somebody, mm -hmm. man. I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Time is precious. Time is precious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm saying don't now. No, I'm saying I like right now. I just want to be single and I just want to have different experiences right. and I want to take my time with my love life and my heart and not have to be uh, be doing it for the gram. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if I like you, I'm going to treat you the best. I'm not. Go I ain't got no time to be cheap, baby. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't got no time to play. You know, so if I, if I like you and we like, I need you to be happy every second of the day. Damn. Yeah. Women are liking this talk. Yeah, I don't want to stay trying? on this, but how you going to just give up the 500 million, though? Why do you just get to have yeah, a million you, like that? You know why? Because you, you can't take it with you. And it's also a lot of stress it, it, uh, that, that, that sometimes people have to put up with digesting this. You know what I'm saying? So you might as well, you know, be mad in the Maybach. 
Now, let me ask you this. Yo, I got to call some my home, I, girl. Saw you, this, I saw you posting. <laughs> by the way, your daughters are all absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So great job with all your kids. Congratulations on that, kid. Yeah. Absolutely. So, when it comes to them dating, yes. it feels like they're that age. Like, what advice do you give your daughters now when it comes to dating? I told my daughters straight up. I said, check this out. Dad is like your best friend. I know what all of these guys want to really, really do. I'm going to school y'all to all the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When it comes time to start dating, I'm going to give you all of this, all of the tricks of the trade, you know? And, um, but I'm going to tell you this right now. If you give it away, it ain't, it, it ain't worth, it ain't worth as much. It ain't worth, you gotta, y'all gotta wait and take your time. And that's like the conversation to treat yourself like queens and don't do nothing without coming to talk to me. Now, what did they say? What did they say? Dad, dad, we love you, dad. But we see what you do and we kind of want to follow you because you are idol and we look up to you. I definitely told them, do not follow me. You know what I'm saying? At this point in your life, do not follow me. And, um, you know, I, I just said your dad is a unique individual, you know. Your dad, you could, you know, that may not be what you what you like, or you may fall in love with somebody like your dad. That's right. honest to you. You know what I'm saying? What if, what if uh, when they're older, in their twenties, they bring home uh, a fifty year old man? What would you say to that? Um, I really would just go on who who really would love my daughters. I really wouldn't go on an age thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm fifty two. I mean, I feel better than I've ever felt, and you know, and it's a, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really think, you know, once people are adults, that's our choice, and I'm definitely, you know, fly than most, you know, young boys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, young oh, boys, or you know, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like timeless. I don't really feel time. Like, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes when Cass be hitting me with the OG, I take it take, take it as respect, but sometimes I be feeling like, oh, oh, you think you <laughs> you think I'm, I'm I'm not here no more? <laughs> or you think we can't wrestle? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, what? yeah. <laughs> you got into a wrestling and move some furniture around. Bro. Hey, yo, yo. <laughs> Don't say wrestle, Diddy. Say yo. fight. Don't say wrestle. <laughs> hey, yo, when I get on you, though, for real, I'm trying to bite your face off. But I don't be doing the same fighting. I'm more of a savage type of fighter. You know what I'm saying? When's the last time you got into a, a wrestling match? Bro? Well, when's the last time you got into a fight? And did you Man. win? It's been a, I mean, it's been a long time. It's, you don't it's, have to. You do pay that. people. You don't have to not have to do that kind of stuff. His name is Love. Okay. Diddy does his own work. Does not fight. Well, it's well, love. I if I saw you I'm, fighting, I'd be like, I'm, Yo, what's I'm going mean, on? Who not doing their job if I'm, Diddy fight? No, it's a friendly fight. Not no real fight. Not no beef. But you know, sometimes you got to punch every right now. Friendly. Now, I'd rather see y'all wrestle, to be honest with you. <laughs> what? You and he, he said punch. I rather no, see no, no, wrestle. It, it, it's, it's more like grappling. You know what I'm saying? More like <laughs> you, are, you gotta you're, stop. You're UFC. Why you're you doing UFC. this? Hey yo, hey yo, check this out. I'm unpausable. You understand what I'm saying? I'm unpausable. Do y'all think that I care? Uh, no. What anything or what? Any... No. Hey yo, I, I, I absolutely don't. Don't want to kill an owned by a black man. That's, That's right. right. You know now, what I'm let saying? Me, let's I'm just saying like I like I like more hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? All right, we got to move on. Let's talk about the music. So, oh, yeah, and I'm not your uncle, though. Oh. For real, I'm your competition. <laughs> I could be your daddy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not like your uncle Leroy. So you don't like unk? You, you don't like OG? None of that? I just like love. No, I don't, I don't take it as a... As, as anything, but it is 50% of people in their head that's really like, damn, you know... You know what's up, OG? You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Where it's like, you could maybe a little feeble. Don't let these young niggas fool you. <laughs> they be trying to motherfucking play you. You know what I'm saying? I, I, could, I could be in something, and it could be, you know, she 28, 30, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Then his time is going to come with the OG like he really yeah, yeah, yeah. disrupting something. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be subliminal OG in, his, in, in age hate in mm -hmm. the industry. I'm here prime time. I, you know, I respect the OG, but I'm not like an original gangster. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I'm king. 
I'm love. True. And so it, sh it should apply. All right, we got more with Diddy when we come back, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Diddy. I was going to ask you, you know, what did you think about, right, where you look at an artist, Mace, right, was upset for you for years? Yes. Then down the line, he has an artist. Mm -hmm. And then recently, his artist is upset because he's basically said, allegedly, that Mace didn't pay him and there was problems. Yeah. Do you look at that and be like, that's that's just an executive or is it one of those things like I told you? First of all... Because what he had a problem first with, you of did, all, he, his artist first of, first of all, see, I didn't do nothing to him. So let's go back to the first... The first of all... The first of all is is there has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true mm -hmm. and has really stained tried to stain stain my legacy i've always been a person i don't like to get in just talking people's business and things like that but not right now i have made it my purpose that when i come back i can't have y'all 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 following me because i am here to be a leader and to give some direction. If you think that I'm a scumbag that will ever steal anything, my name is Diddy, Sean Combs. I never took nothing from nobody a day in my life. All I've ever given is, is opportunity and more money than a person was making. So when I hear like, or I see things, and I'm like, wow, this, this, this vibe that they got on me, like I'm Big Red or something, I came here. I had to open up the doors. So you saying you I don't mean, you, 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 you don't mean, steal from artists? Is what you saying? Never, never. So how never, does a narrative like that happen ne with so many different never. people? Because people have this thing called the tap out button. When you get to a certain point and the money is running low, you wanna you gotta run this hustle to try to find somebody to blame. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have all my receipts. And so we are going to do a special, a retrospective with all the artists. And we're going to get this narrative clear because it comes from different tactics when people want to get out of contracts. And, and a lot of people that speak on this, y'all don't know the business. Y'all don't know what y'all are talking about. So it's going to be a teaching moment of love because it is important. I feel Fight for your reputation. Mm -hmm. I'm a fight for my reputation. I'm a fight for the honorable man I am, the righteous king that I am. I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? There could have been an accountant mess up on this one or that one, things that happen in the business. But me actually, like, I'm running a hustle to get money. I started de delivering papers at 12 years old. I was a millionaire when I was 19. You know what I'm saying? And so I will be making sure that the truth comes out because that's not going down in, 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 in my legacy. And to me, that's the worst thing in the world is a thief. The thief is the worst thing. His hand should be chopped. Her hand should be chopped off. His or her hand should be. That's the way I feel about somebody taking something from somebody that ain't theirs. You know what I'm saying? When you could go out and you could go and work for something. And so that right there, um, I just just you know just in general it, you know the mace thing you know i did one album with mace one album how much money do you think i owe this guy one album and then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people and then y'all gonna let him throw dirt on the god's name we going we i wrote each and every one and each and everybody anybody could come and step up bring your receipts but i'm not playing I'm back outside and I'm fighting back for us. And I'm also doing do a little fighting back for me. You know what I'm saying? So how much money does and I'm, I'm just throwing this out, how much money does somebody like a Mace owe you? Cause, cause the, the reason I Mace say that, owes me three million dollars. That's <laughs> facts. I got the receipt. Second album, you gave money to do second album, never delivered. Did the album never delivered. You know okay. what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna go back and forth with Mace. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going back and forth with nobody. I'm just gonna if I'm here, I'm gonna speak up for myself. I'm gonna Absolutely. speak up for myself now. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not gonna have you think something that I, I hate. I hate a thief. I hate somebody that don't got and I don't hate nobody, but that's with with somebody that just gotta 
take something that somebody else worked for mm -hmm. just for their benefit and they fin I, I don't like that. You so know you're really saying? doing a special, like you're taping a special to address I think these. Diddy just came up with that idea right now. No, no. Oh, I was oh. more saying, you know, I'm going to use, you know, I have a very, I have a very um, successful, thank you mm -hmm. to everybody for supporting network. Mm -hmm. So, Remote. yeah, I'm going to go and tell my story on, on, on my network with one of my podcasts. And I'm going to also get the artists that that you know together to to um you know help me clear this up what would the you lot know, say like i spoke to a lot yeah i told a lot they gonna help me clear it up yeah. they know i mean people i mean the truth gonna be the truth but we gonna get to the truth as long as i'm outside we gonna get not trying to start nothing with nobody mace i love mace if you did that and i will tell anybody anybody thinks i owe some show me the receipt you get paid in 24 hours because sometimes there's accounting problems you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. there's but well, we all go to well, we yeah. never really got a big check from yeah, Revolt, that was, but that's nothing. That you know really what I mean? That have nothing to do. Awesome. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you what happened with that. You know what I'm saying? Your people at Our Heart, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I gave them the money, and, and they kept all the money. Mm. I believe it. They kept they 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 kept all the money. So now, now that's why y'all could come to me direct. Mm -hmm. And y'all get the two million direct. You feel me? We take I'm making PayPal, a lot of changes. Cash app, Venmo, Zell. Hey, yo, Zell. Hey, yo, I really hey, did enjoy, hey, I enjoyed being on Revolt. <laughs> if you People come over the, Yeah, if you come over to Revolt, Revolt, Revolt right now, you remember how y'all was saying like Revolt ain't paying, we we being cheap. Now yeah, we was a, we we was a startup company. Y'all good now, yeah. Good now. Yeah, yeah, I actually do now. a lot of stuff with Revolt on other shows and yes. they always take care of me. Yes. And and it's always Street a pleasant experience. Yes. Everybody there is yes. everything smooth, flights, yeah. rooms. Yeah. Damn, I got a couple hold, more questions. No, 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 hold on. And 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 um and I wanna say about this this show. This show is is as big as it is because we unified. Mm -hmm. And that's just facts. That's People always number. are like, how come y'all not you know on the anymore? So, so so yeah, so just make sure as y'all out there, make sure the way you speak about the God, you feel me? Just speak about it like from a place of knowledge and a place of receipts. And um yeah. What's um, new on Revolt coming up? New on Revolt, I mean Carisha, please. Mm -hmm. And um she won last night. Listen, you know Carisha, I love Carisha, please yeah. won last wait, night. Wait, wait, wait. I love yeah, Carisha. Yeah. 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 But it was tied yeah. with drink champs. Diddy, you know that's some bull. What? It tied. It tied. I thought it, it tied. Carisha please and Drink Champs tied for best podcast. They both on Revolt. So you paid for that? No, I didn't pay for that. Drink Champ should have won that, that hey, hand yo, down. Hey, yo, 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 I didn't Why pay for that. I'm trying to Carisha I got, only got, and I love Carisha. She only got five episodes. How'd she beat Drink Champ for best podcast, Diddy? Come on now. Because it was the best podcast Stop. of the year. Hands down. I love Carisha. Hands down, it was the best podcast of the year. No. But you know what? I get at the drink chance. And $8 million dollars worth of game. And I feel hey. like a, a lot of women podcasters don't get their just due. And so I best podcast of the doing. year, Diddy? Yes. Yes. Come on, over drink champs a million dollars worth of game? Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Club should have been there. Hey, hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, check it out. Don't be mad at me because I'm a winner. All right? <laughs> Don't be mad at she me because I'm a winner. You stay with me. Yeah, you would have stayed. You may have won. Like, well, like, congrats, Carisha, for that. Yeah, yeah. Let's Con get, congrats Diddy to the queen. Go. Congrats. <laughs> Love let's matters. Let's introduce the record. We Black the Lives remix, Matter. Right? Yeah. We're going to play this remix. Can we play this remix? Or do we got to wait for Friday? Nah. I'm just messing with you. Come on, we're going to play this remix right now. So this is the remix. Diddy got to move on featuring Young Miami and Ashanti. Word. Yeah, Bryson Tiller, mm -hmm. Will Tracks. Mm -hmm. Done by Ron Browns, New York. All right, let's do it. It's Puff. It's oh, you call you Puff. Diddy. Yes. Love. Nah, yo, yo, y'all can call me all of that though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's Puff. It's Diddy. It's Love. Yeah, yeah. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was born a donkey. It's the donkey of the day. That's for the fun. Charlemagne the devil? Possibly. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Yes, Donkey today goes to an Iowa man named Christopher Erlbacher. He's 29 years old of Woodbine, Iowa, and he was sentenced on Monday to a mandatory life sentence two months after he was convicted of first degree murder. Now, what saddens me about this situation? This is yet another example of young boys not being able to settle their differences the old-fashioned way with their fists. Folks used to could just fight. Remember when folks could just fight? 
and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But that male ego is so fragile that some people just can't take that L when they lose that fist fight. By the way, uh, I'm sitting here talking about the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way stopped being the old-fashioned way in like the 90s. All right, <laughs> folks was running to grab guns when I was nah. in high school. 2000s, you still fought in the 90s. 2000s was when they started having so? hammers. Yeah. Really? Uh -huh. I got my last fight in about 2000. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about people. Uh -huh. Right? You are not a person. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a person. Jesus Christ. I'll be a person. Right? I think around the 90s is when the gun violence really started. At least from, for at least for my age. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever. But Christopher and his friend Khalib were out eating and drinking, and Christopher overstepped his friend Khalib's boundaries. We've been talking a lot about boundaries. I told y'all 2022 is the year of the boundaries, okay? He... Christopher overstepped his friend Khalib's boundaries by playing with his food. I don't like nobody playing with my food. Okay, I had to tell my three-year-old daughter that yesterday. You don't walk up to people and just put your hand in their plate. All right, we don't practice. You don't do that, man. <laughs> Even at three. You're doing a deep hole. She put your finger in your food. Yeah, it came over me like Pac-Man doing her mouth. Mom, 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 and then like putting her hand in my like, yo, baby. All right. I understand you're three years old, but we don't practice bad habits. That is a bad habit that can carry into adulthood. Okay, you know how you got them adults right now that they can see you eating and they'll just reach for your plate? That's because nobody told them to stop doing that as a child when they were pretending to be Pac-Man. Standing over your plate. Okay? And that's what happened between Christopher and Khalid. Would you like to know the details? Let's go to News 4 KTIV for the report, please. 28-year-old Christopher Erlbacher of Woodbine is charged with first-degree murder in the December 17, 2020 death of Caleb Solberg in Pisgah, Iowa. The incident centers around a physical altercation involving four people at the Old Home Cafe in Pisgah. Erlbacher and a friend, Sean Johnson, were feuding with two other men, Caleb Solberg and Craig Pryor. During the dispute, Erlbacher allegedly struck Pryor's vehicle and ran over Solberg several times, which authorities say caused fatal injuries to Solberg. Additionally, authorities say Erlbacher continued to drive by the body of Solberg, which hindered anyone from providing aid. Erlbacher eventually fled the scene and contacted his father for help. His father, though, took him back to the cafe where he was taken into custody. And what the news report doesn't tell you is that the two friends were eating and drinking at a bar when Christopher decided to put mayonnaise on Solberg's food, okay? And Solberg was not happy with the mayonnaise being added, so he reacted by punching Erlbacher, okay? That damn mayonnaise. Your Uncle Charlotte has been warning you about mayonnaise for years on this damn radio, okay? Dukes, Heinz, Hellman's, Kraft, all of it is the devil, all right? Too much goddamn mayonnaise. It is Satan's spread. And too much of it ruins any and everything, okay? Too much mayonnaise in potato salad makes it not edible. Too much mayonnaise in tuna makes it not edible. That's why I refer to some white folks as human jars of helmets. That's not racist. It's science, all right? Too much of it just makes people sick. You have to have just enough, just enough with all the other ingredients makes the perfect dish, the perfect society. Okay, this man could leave would be alive today if Christopher hadn't forced mayonnaise on his food if he hadn't violated his boundaries by trying to put mayonnaise on his friend's food now what makes the situation so bad is christopher was the aggressor from the beginning christopher attempted to force the mayonnaise on his food all right he violated his friend's boundaries his man punched him and instead of realizing you know what i was wrong let me leave it alone he let his what i assume would be liquor fueled ego call you to kill a man with your whip over miracle whip some donkey of the days just saw themselves. Uh, please give Christopher Erlbacher the biggest hee-haw. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day, sir. Mm -hmm. The Breakfast Club. So we're asking you if you ever fell in love with a stripper. Now, I uh, frequently DJ strip clubs all the time. And I remember one particular time, our camera guy up here, uh, he was feeling sad, so I took him out for his birthday. Which one? <laughs> Nick? No, 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 Steve. Camera guy, Steve. Oh, Steve. 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 Okay, Steve. Steve now, used to work for a I did remote. my set. I was out, out of the club at about uh, 3 o'clock. I said, yo, Steve, you ready to go? He was like, nah, I'll stay for a little bit. I was like, Steve, you know nobody here. He was like, no, but, you know, the stripper's feeling me. I said, no, she's not <laughs> feeling me. I said, she's not feeling you, sir. She's uh, feeling the money that you're throwing. He's like, no, no, no. I think we have a connection. I said, well, hit me when you get home. <laughs> so I know you made it home safe. Steve waited there till about 4.20 until she got out of work. That's how much in love he was with that stripper. Now, Listen, what happened after that? I don't know. But he was definitely in love. It's the stripper's job to give you attention, guys. 
it's a completely transactional relationship. Yes. You're throwing your ones, she's dancing. That's what the strip club is for. It's like literally going into a barbershop, paying the barber to cut your hair and saying, yo, I think I think he's feeling me, yo. He's, he's playing on my neck. No, he's cutting your hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's the same thing with a stripper. Yeah, but but I will say this, and for the strippers out there, when the strippers don't dance and they have conversations with their uh, mark, I'll call them. <laughs> that's when it gets a little. They're nice. having conversations to see if you got some goddamn money. But the conversation to see if they should be wasting their time with the you. Conversation makes the mark feel special because he's like, "Wow, you dance with everybody, but you're sitting down talking to me." I think she likes. That's it. why strippers are great hosts. Drop on the clues bonds for all the strippers out there. That's why they're amazing at what they do because they make you feel special. They make you feel wanted, and that's how you have to make somebody feel if you want them to throw their money. Salute to all the strippers, man. Yeah, I, you ever fell in love with a stripper? Yes, and me. You the only year. Uh, no, I absolutely haven't. Yeah, I have a lot of friends who are strippers or former strippers. I mean, I never fell in love with a scribble. I mean, you know, I've been I've been fond of one in my day. Okay, but never fell in love. And the first time you got a... Was that a strip club? Yeah, that was... Pff, I was a kid, though. Like, that wasn't even, I wasn't even old enough to be in the strip club. My goodness. I'll tell you this, too. We need to be asking this question about the bottle girls, the bartenders, the bartenders. <laughs> Not, might, this generation might have definitely fell in love with a couple of bartenders, a couple of bottle girls before the strippers. Well, hello, who's this? Yes, hello, this is Sean. Oh, Sean, it sounds like you fell in love with a stripper or, or a bottle girl. Oh, uh, don't do me like that. Uh, yes, I fell in love with the Hooters girl. Uh, okay. Back in the day, me and my friends, we used to go up there up in Connecticut, and uh, she was a, a beautiful brown-skinned woman, and I would tip her a lot, and I ended up, she ended up connecting me into paying for a car payment. Damn. Um, and then I remember I would come in the Hooters, and at, at one point in time, she wasn't giving me the energy and the love that I thought I deserved, but she <laughs> You hear your goddamn fra fragile ego? She didn't give me the love I deserve. What the hell you mean? Yeah, well, you know, I was tipping her nicely, man. Nicely. I ego, was, bro. I you leading with ego, oh, bro. Oh, boy. Poor you. That's all ego. Hello, who's this? Hey, it's Mitra. What's up, y'all? What's up, Peace, Mitra? Mitra. Who you fell in love with, Mitra? So, it was my masseuse. So, it was a female masseuse that massaged me. And my husband actually dropped me off at the appointment. And I was like, we go together now when she's finished? But, yeah, I was like, I was really feeling her. And it was crazy. What feel made you feel her so much? Huh? What made you feel yeah. her so much? My hands. She knew how to use her hands. Did she touch places she wasn't supposed to? No, she wasn't. But I wanted her to. Goodness gracious. <laughs> So why you ain't keep in touch with her? <laughs> she probably did. <laughs> I, I, I just said it was we was on vacation, so we were out of town. So okay. I mean, it is what it is. All right. Thank you, Mama. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. We're asking, have you fell in love with a stripper? That is the question. Call us now with the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it now. I Call me. Get your opinions to the Breakfast Club Top. Come on. 800-585-1051. So we're asking, have you ever fell in love with a stripper? Now, you know what's so crazy, though? Uh, we haven't had one person call in and say they fell in love with a stripper. We had them say they fell in love with a Hooters girl and, and a, masseuse. A, masseuse. a masseuse. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? We can hear you. What's up, Hello? buddy? You, in love? you fell in love with a stripper? Hey, hey, what's up, Charlemagne? Peace, King. Yeah, man. Like, how y'all doing, man? I want y'all to know I definitely appreciate what y'all do, what y'all got going on, man. What's up, brother? Hello? Hey. Thank you much, man. I fell in love with a stripper man back in my high school. Mm -hmm. High school day. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. Her name was Essence, man. I'm, I'm still, I'm still in love with her. <laughs> how long has it been, sir? Y'all still together? Hey, it's, it's been about it's been about a good five six years, man. The girl, she is fat booty, man. Body shape, just just tattoos. She just, I mean, she looked good. She looked hella good, man. I, I just, I, I ain't been to the strip club since. Every time I go, honestly, I fall in love with strippers every time I go. So I just gotta stay away from them for real. Does she know how you feel about her? Have you, you know, tried to holler maybe outside of her work hours? Hello. No. Hey, wh who's this? I don't know. I, this nigga. 
else. We thought we was too. Nick, you fell in love with a stripper, bro? What happened to the other guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, I think I'm in love with one right now. What's her name? Asia baby and Indianapolis. This is man flawless, man. You gotta stop playing with him. Oh, what is, oh Lord. Have you tried to holler at her outside of uh, office hours, sir, when she's not working? Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's cool, people. You know, I got the Instagram or whatever. I talk to her over here, got her number. You know, we talk a little bit, but it's hard to get her out the club, man. It's Do you spend a lot of money in the club on her? Um. I spent a decent amount, but I think where the connection came at is when she uh, <laughs> came on the podcast. She came you on know, your I, podcast? Yeah, yeah, you know, the In Your Face podcast. You know, she came on two different episodes. She called Strip of Soul. So we had her and a couple other people. But, you know, just getting to sit there, interview her, talk to her. I was like, I think I love this girl. So won't you tell her? Won't you be like, you're about to experience a morning show unlike any other. Shout out to the Breakfast Club. I hope to see y'all every morning. What you guys are doing right now is the hub culture. The Breakfast Club is my morning sit. I need it and I love it so much. I feel like you really not popping until you do the Breakfast Club. I've been waiting to come to y'all show, man. I know you got to be a big time celebrity to be up in here. You got to be, you got to be big time. DJ Enzy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. The Breakfast Club, bitches. Right the fuck out. I'm dialing, I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling call you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The <laughs> Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's going on? It's Cass. Cass, what up, man? Get it off your chest. Um, I just want to get off my chest. Man, it's hella hard to pan in the weather. It's, it's just stressful. And I thought it would be the message that we're making it more stressful than anything, but it's the family. It's just, yeah. I don't know. I Why, what they doing? Everybody. Well, my mom is just intruding in everything. We asked her to just to make reservations for the restaurant, and she's adding like 15 other people on, wanting to throw different other things in there, and asking me to pay for it. I'm like, wait, you suggesting these things. Why don't you pay for it? Why do I gotta pay for it? I pay for everything else. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's very difficult. <laughs> I, I would just let I would let your wife handle it, brother, and just just say yes and just take care of it. That's that's what I did for my wedding. I let my wife take care of everything, brother. What happened to the father's wife paying for everything? Remember that used to be a thing that they used to tell us growing up. I, that never happened. Oh, you should shut up. You got four daughters and I got four. We ain't doing that no more. My father-in-law did donate a significant amount to me and my wife's wedding. Though. That is that that is a fact. Mm. The only person that's helped out is her grandmother and her godmother, and they helped her with her dress. And as far as some of the planning and everything, but everything else has been on me, and nobody else has done nothing but me. So this is just crazy. Uh, you don't mind if I shout out my wife? Uh, you should, yes, sir. And, um, I just want to give a shout out to India Hawkins. This is uh, from your uh, future husband. Let you know I love you, baby. And uh, we're about to spend the rest of our lives together, fantastic lives together. We're going, we're going to elevate and get better through everything. I love there you, you go. Dope. Dope. All right, brother. Have a good one, man. And good luck with everything. Hello, who's this? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get it off your chest, mama. Okay. So we came in the car waiting for Charlemagne to yo 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 this morning, and he didn't. Hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then just walking here like I just been here the whole time, huh? Exactly. <laughs> So you gonna give it to us and tell them, hey, this is E from the large on the seventh floor. You gave me my, my um, book bag that I can browse before. Oh, okay, Queen, how are you? I'm good, and I just want to say I miss you. And tell wife, I'm so excited. I'm gonna tell him right now. You know, well, he probably can hear you. You probably listening. He downstairs. Okay, K K. Yo 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 y
Hello, who's this? Hi, I'm Brittany calling from Tampa, Florida. Hey, Brittany, get it off your chest. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I got through. I just want to shout you guys out. I listen to you guys every day. Angela, I just love everything about you, your soul. You're so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Charlemagne, everything you're doing for mental health and DJ MV. I love how you're such a strong family man, and I just love you guys so much. Yeah. But I really want to get off my chest. Mm. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, Team Cancer, Charlemagne. Hey. But I really want to get off my chest that, you know, I'm 32 years old. The biological clock is ticking. I'm, like, on dating apps. It's just hard to meet, like, a good black king. And I'm just like, what What else do you do? It's just like, I work every day. I can't really, like, be out going out mixing and mingling. But it's like, I'm mm-hmm. just kind of thinking about switching over outside my race at this point because I just feel like not valued by black men anymore. I feel like mm. overlooked. Have you ever dated outside your race? I've tried it like once, but it just wasn't my thing. Look, I, I just mean, think you can't you can't blame a whole race of men for the ones that you've met, you know, so I wouldn't give up on that. But I think you'll end up at some point finding the right person just don't rush it and don't make decisions just because you feel like your biological clock is ticking you gotta be with somebody don't give in to that pressure but just understand that things can change in an instant you know and I am still a fan of while apps are good going out and living my life and meeting people like that right right thank you Angela I love you guys thank you you too Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, yo, 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 yo. It's all about you, DJ Envy. And only you. Good morning. How may I help you this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it off my chest. I've been wanting to get this off my chest since I was at your car show. That, and Jersey, that's how long I've been wanting to get this off my chest. Uh-uh. I've been calling for this. I, this is my moment right here. That's uh-huh. all I have. I'm, I'm going to say, first of all. Hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, man. What is going on? All right, continue. All right, I'm going to send happy vibes out to the Buffett Club as a whole. For DJ 